G'day guys, here we are live at the Glendale Sports Centre for the 2016 launch of the 2016 Hunter Track Classic. Got elite athletes behind me, all the dignitaries. Uh, we've also got Robbo, who's here today as well. I'm Mossy. We're going to be the hosts of uh, the launch today. As you can see here, beautiful uh, kind of sports centre in Glendale. Um, guys, just sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. There'll be uh, food and coffees afterwards, which you won't be able to get hold of. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get things underway probably in the next five or ten minutes. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. Well, right, guys, we'll get things underway. We'll firstly, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of this land, the people of the uh, Awabakal Nation. We'd like to also acknowledge the elders past and present and uh, pay our respects to any Aboriginal people who may be present with us today. Welcome, everybody. Here we are. Robo, the 2016 Hunter Track Classic promises to be an absolute builder. Yeah, it does, Mossy. It's the seventh uh, straight edition of the Hunter Track Classic. And, mate, there's been so many good memories over the years. I want to start by asking you, mate, what's been some of the, the highlights for you over those seven years? Probably the first uh, Hunter Track Classic I did, Scott Westcott uh, gave me a an email and asked if I'd come down and MC the event. I do recall uh, a very ambitious uh, attempt at entertaining the crowd. I was standing out here, we were about to introduce the, the 100 metre uh, sprint, the final event of the evening, and uh, Scotty decided what we'll do is we'll turn off all the banks of light. So it was completely dark, the spotlight came on myself, it then came on the athletes. As the athletes ran down towards the start line, there was a LED lights display and uh, the crowd was going off. Now, there was only one little problem, and that was that when they uh, tested turning the lights off and on, they didn't test it for five minutes. And so all of a sudden, uh, the lights weren't coming on. I won't tell you exact words that were coming through my ears, uh, but let's just say the uh, meat presentation manager wasn't too impressed, but they finally came on, and uh, yeah, that was probably the highlight for me, mate. And it, it, I guess it highlights uh, one of the things about the Hunter Track Classic, it is what we call the athletes meet, they love this meet, and it also is one uh, that harnesses a lot of innovation as well. For me, Mossy, I just love the fact that here we are in, in you know, Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, the Hunter, and uh, not a big capital city, but yet we get a capital city style athletics meet here once a year, and it's, uh, you know, it's a credit to Scott and the, and the team to have kept that going now for seven years, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more years to come. Mossy, of extra significance today, I want to read out a couple of countdowns that are coming up, and we've got the the, the uh, Brazilian flag uh, resting over there next to the Aussie flag. It's only 273 days until the Rio 2016 Paralympics. Got your bags, Pat? Re oh, mate, it's around the corner. Uh, 240 days until the Rio 2016 Olympics, and quite significantly for what we're here for today, 52 days until the Hunter Track Classic. So, look, we're going to see this year qualifiers, hopefully, people aspiring to get over and make those teams over in Rio, here on the track behind us, uh, in competing in January. So that's going to be very exciting, and uh, we'll mention a little bit more about what some of the action that is coming up. Absolutely. Now, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome everyone here today, in particular Mr. Sean Scanlon, who is the Chair of Athletes New South Wales. We'll hear from him uh, in just a few moments, uh, as well as some of the elite athletes. Uh, we do have Kurt Fernley, Reid McCracken and uh, Michelle Jenica here today. We'll, we'll hear a, a little bit about their preparations and also what the Hunter Track Classic uh, means to them uh, in just a few moments. And Mossy, uh, just a, a point of difference, I guess, that the Hunter Track Classic has it. A lot of the athletes, they love coming back here each year. You know, we, we chat to them and and the coaches as well, and it doesn't take much to convince them to come back up here as well. So uh, many of these athletes have made the claim that it, that it is the most enjoyable athletics meet in the country, and uh, Tamsin Manu, Benny Harradine, Danny Samuels, people of, of this nature, you know, they, they rave about the event, and it's great to have them here, and it's great that we, we, we put on such a show and welcome them here as well. As I mentioned, the, the Hunter Track Classic, it is an important part of the Australian Athletics Tour. It's the first stop of the 2016 tour and uh, the summer of us as, as it's being branded it'll culminate in the national championships just down the road in april in the, with the uh in sydney uh, on the new track down there they're redoing the track at the moment and then selection shortly after for those teams in rio so the hunter to rio the journey starts here and it's uh, it's going to be very exciting a couple of quick stats from last year over 2500 people attended the event 
uh, on the Saturday night. 30% were from outside the region, and we had almost 400 athletes, nearly 100 of those from interstate as well. So it's doing great things for uh, not only you know the sport locally, but also the local economy. Nice little boost there as well. Absolutely. Now I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Sean Scanlon, who is the chair of Athletics New South Wales, just to say a few words. Thanks, guys. Um, I was just standing here thinking about what a great event this is, and one reason is you guys. Um, at the board level, we often think about meat presentation, how we can improve meats, and I think how we improve meats is having Robbie and Moss, and Mossy and Robbo come along and present. I think that's what gets people involved, how this meat gets presented, the commentary you guys provide, the way that this, the athletes interact with the, the audience and the, the crowd, but the way people get into and we're close to the action. And, and that's the Hunter Sports Centre as well. There's a lot to be said for this location and this venue. So thanks to Hunter Sports Centre for hosting once again. We're very lucky to have some fantastic sponsors, um, Hunter Star Motors, Greater Building Society, um, Ibis Hotels. Have I missed anybody? You can say the rest of them for me. But, you know, we do really appreciate that. And we have the Friends of the Hunter Track Classic um, group who get together on a regular basis to try and ensure that this event is viable. And year on year it is viable. So thank you for your support, all of the sponsors on that. That's an important element of it. Um, it is a great event because we have some fantastic athletes who come here every year and um, that continues I think leading into Rio as you guys say and into the future leading into the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games. Um, I met with the new President of Athletics Australia last week Mark Arbib, um, he's a former Federal Sports Minister and I'll do my best to get him up here and make sure he sees this event because I think he and Athletics Australia can learn a lot from this event and how other events around Australia can be presented as I said before. But um, there's a lot of enthusiasm. This is an important event for Athletics New South Wales. So I think it's also an important event for the Hunter. As a local resident, I'm 100% behind this, and I hope that more people around the area will. I think the timing this year is good. Kids are probably back at school around about that time, so we'll try and get as many kids here as possible. And I think the events also lend themselves to that involvement from the community. And I think the community aspect to this is so important. Thanks very much, Sean. We're going plugged. We've done this before. Um, I think just some, something of a little bit of significance as well. We mentioned over two and a half thousand people came in last year. Not a bad effort considering that it was the night of the Asian Cup final where the soccer is at that famous victory. So uh, to, to do that on such a big occasion, I think, was a testament to not just the organisers of the event but also uh, the, the greater people of the, the Hunter region. Um, mate, sponsors are very, very important to uh, the success of the event. Uh, one recent sponsor who's come on board, Lake Macquarie City Council. I'd uh, invite Jasmine Munro, if she'd like to uh, come up and uh, have a few words. Jasmine uh, is the Promotions Coordinator at Lake Macquarie City Council. Thank you, thank you. So Lake Macquarie City Council is thrilled to obviously come on board and be a sponsor of this fantastic event. Obviously, for one, it's in Lake Macquarie, which we love, um, and it brings people into our city. And it's such a fantastic facility. I mean, the Hunter Sports Centre is such a high calibre facility to be able to host this event in. So we're thrilled to be able to be a part of it. Um, we love to see the community spirit fostered with this particular event as well and, and being available to the people with all abilities. So um, this is our second year as being a, being a sponsor of the uh, Hunter Track Classic and we're hoping to continue their relationship for, for many years. So we wish you uh, all the best of luck for, for, for January and you're obviously here um, cheering on the athletes as they run through. So thank you very much. <laughs> we'll also recognise a few of our other sponsors, Ibis Hotel Newcastle, uh, Hunter Sports Centre, Newcastle City Council, Athletics Australia, Little Athletics New South Wales, Pure Performance Sports, Grandstand Physio, Australian Reptile Park, Secure Scaffolding, Pedigree Family Funerals, Lawrence Rundle Rapson, and also our media partners have been on uh, with us since day dot. Uh, NBN Television, we have Mitch Hughes here, and our Newcastle Herald, thanks Josh Leeson for coming on board uh, once again. Thanks Mossy, and uh, look, let's get stuck into what we can look forward to in the 2016 event, and I'd like to invite creator and organiser of the Hunter Track Classic, Scott Westock, to come on up and we'll have a little bit of a chat, Scotty, as we, as we often do. Yeah, no, that's fine. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like, uh, yeah, seven years is maybe uh, on, on the seventh day. We rest. We rest. <laughs> um, so I'd like to think that's true in some degree. Like, we have built a culture around the Hunter Track Classic, so 
nominations go online today, so elite athletes will be nominating today. So that means we'll get a pretty good picture of who really wants to come this year. Um, so we do have athletes that are funded to come from Athletics Australia, and we, we do fund a few athletes ourselves. But um, probably one of the highlights for me is just going to be watching the, the wheelchair mile or 1500, whatever it is, uh, or maybe toss a point before the start. But, but, um, that was probably my favourite event last year, and most likely will be again this year. All right, well, thanks very much, Scotty. Round of applause for Scotty and all. Thanks again for all you do to uh, pull everything together, mate, and, uh, and all the team at Athletics New South Wales. Now, um, as I said, as we've mentioned, there's several high-profile athletes that will be joining us in the 2016 edition, um, and joining them will be a couple of stars that we've got here today, and we're going to have a quick chat uh, with, with these guys now. Uh, I'd like to welcome Michelle Jenica to come up and up onto the stage. We're going to have a quick, quick, quick chat. Michelle's from, uh, she's a sprint hurdler from Dural. That's more in the southern reaches of the Hunter region. Oh. <laughs> and uh, look, she's got an impressive list of, of achievements, if you don't mind, uh, Michelle. I'll just read a couple of these out. Stemming back from her junior days, a silver medal uh, at the 2010 Youth Olympic Games in Singapore. Fifth at the World Juniors in 2012 in Barcelona. That was all before progressing onto the senior ranks, where she's uh, finished fifth in the final at the Glasgow 2014 Commonwealth Games. Silver at the Australian Open Championships in Brisbane earlier this year and managed to smash through the 13 second uh, barrier in the heat, only to improve that in the final where she became the second fastest 100 metre hurdler uh, female in Australian history, only behind the great Sally Pearson. Uh, backing that up with a bronze, the 2015 World Uni Games this year in Guangzhou in South Korea running 12.94, which funnily enough was an Olympic qualifier, which, uh, which is fantastic. That, uh, then heading over to Beijing for the semi final, made the semi finals in the 100 metre hurdles there, running 1301, ranking at 18th in the world. So uh, we're in the company of greatness here today. And Michelle, thanks for coming along and, and having a chat. You've competed here at the moment before. Um, are you looking forward to, to stepping on the spot again in 2016? I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I love this meet and like I love it so much. Even last year I wasn't competing, but I still came out here to watch, even though it was quite a drive. But it's, um, it's such a fun event and it's a really intimate event and you really feel like you're part of it. So I'm so excited to be racing against, again this year. Now, uh, just some of those achievements there. I mean, 2015, we've, we've still got however many days left, uh, 21, <laughs> 20 odd days, 22 days to go. But what a year it's been for you. Um, what have you put that success down to? What have, what have been the things that have worked for you in training? You know, what, what, how's it all come together in your mind? Um, yeah, 2015 was a great year. Um, and I think it just came from, I had a really long block of being injury free, which is really important. And um, I sort of changed my mentality and my training a little bit, um, changed some things in the gym and a few things I was doing on the track. And it sort of all just came together and has like worked really well and I managed to get some massive times. Um, and I, I mean, I think I'm even better coming into the 2016 season. So I'm really excited for what that's going to bring. Now, I want to know a bit more about your time management. You're currently studying a, a BA in mechatronic engineering down there at Sydney Uni. How do you fit training in around some, some study as well? Um, it's difficult at times, yeah. I will admit. But yeah, it's just it's really about planning what's important at certain times. And obviously, sometimes athletics is more important, other times uni is more important. And I sort of just piece that together. Um, it's all managing managing to work at the moment, which I'm grateful for. But I think leading into Rio, I might have to drop a couple of subjects and maybe just do two subjects um, per semester. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll get a, uh, a, a note to approve that. That'll, <laughs> that'll be fine. Now, final question, the all-important question. I read that you took dancing lessons for 10 years. So was it just a natural progression that some of that uh, those skills have come through in your pre-race routine? Um, quite possibly. Uh, yes, I did start off as a dancer um, and also gymnastics. So I came from a bit of that background and. I mean, that's probably where it came from. I'm not really sure. It's just something that I do. Yeah, well, it's worked for you. Before 2012 at, the, at Barcelona, I think that was when sort of, uh, the YouTube uh, video went, went big. But were you doing it in your routine before all that? Yeah, yeah I started yeah. doing it in this December 2009. So I've cool. been doing it for quite a few years now. It's obviously working very well for you, and you, you know you're backing it up on the track, and it's uh, it's amazing. I can't wait to see how much quicker you can go. Have you got any numbers in, in mind? You know, you've, got, you've got that Olympic qualifier under your belt. How how much quicker do you hope you might be able to go before Rio? Um, the goal this season is to run somewhere in the 12.6 sort of area. So yeah. that's that's the goal for the season. All right. Well, Scotty's here today. If you um, maybe buy him a coffee, he'll, he'll put on a nice. <laughs> 
Uh, one point nine tailwind. tailwind for you. We'll have to mark the track and on the away. on the thirtieth of, <laughs> of January. So you can all, you can organise that, Scotty. We'll do that. All right. Thanks very much on behalf of everyone here, Michelle. Thanks very much for coming on for a chat. A big round of applause for Michelle and Jenica coming up from Sydney. So that's uh, fantastic. Now I'd like to welcome uh, another young fella. He's uh, this fella's from a little bit closer from Hamilton, but by a car core. And uh, welcome up onto the stage, Kurt Fernley. Come on up here. Yeah, there's not a lot that this fella hasn't achieved. Multiple winner of some of the world's biggest marathons, multiple Paralympic and IPC world champs gold medalist. Won the city to Hobart Yacht Race, conquered the Kokoda Track, and he's even well on his way to conquering parenthood. Uh, well done, Kurt. Being, being conquered by parenthood. Well, yeah, aren't we all, mate? Aren't we all? Now, mate, um, get a little little roll on the, the track last year in the, in the mile. Uh, tell us, what was it like competing in front of the home fans? Uh, particularly about the, bringing the entire crowd into lane four, uh, that was sensational. Yep. For the final lap, you do the, you know, everyone starts racing and it's and it's pretty much on, and then all of a sudden the crowd are right there. So it feels like you come around that last bend and you hit this tunnel, and they're all saying go Kurt. So what's better than that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't be able to organise that again. I, I think this year too. Now, last twelve months, mate, you've been a busy boy. Um, races internationally, uh, promoting the book, speaking gigs, a little bit of training and, and fatherhood <laughs> in there as well. I mean, how do you go managing all that stuff as well? Uh, it's a juggle. Uh, you you prioritise what's the most important for this week, for this month, and so on and so forth. And then you fit things around that. But I have plenty of pre-planning, which I would have never seen myself do as a teenager. But yeah, we're kind of we're finding that balance. But for the next nine weeks, I feel like I've picked every job that I've created over the last three Wales for the support not only of 
this race, but making sure that the wheelchairs were a pretty heavy uh, feature in it. So, you know, love getting to race here, and thanks Lake also for looking after the race. Wonderful. And before you go, quick shout out to Kurt's training partner. We've let him off the hook today. But Reed McCracken in the background there, and he'll be threatening when it comes around to Rio uh, as well in the power So. Reid is an adopted uh, athlete these days from Bundaberg. From the northern part of the Hunter. Northern region, that's right. <laughs> I'm the southwestern part of the Hunter, I guess. That's, as well. that's right. So it's great to have Reid here and, uh, and doing some training, and he'll be here on uh, Hunter Track Classic Night as well. Thanks very much, mate. Mossy, how good's that? Oh, sensational, mate. Uh, you know, I guess we're all looking forward to uh, next year. Did get out of the bag, though. I'm not sure who mentioned it, but the date is Saturday, the 30th of January. So straight after Australia Day that weekend uh, preceding that. Uh, it is going to be a great event. Uh, you can check out all the social media channels, Hunter Track Classic, as well as the website, which is constantly being updated, and that's at huntertrackclassic.com.au. Uh, Wonderful. Well, that's enough from us. Thanks again, one and all. Um, thanks to Scotty for bringing it all together once again. Thanks again to Michelle, Kurt, Reid, and uh, yeah, and to you, Mossy. Well done, one of your best. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Um, and just for any media opportunities, obviously you have Kurt, uh, Michelle, sure. have a chat to Reid as well, Sean Scanlon or uh, Scott Westcott. Thank you. Good morning, T's, just behind us up there. So please avail yourself for morning, T's. Final word from Periscope from Kurt Fernley. See you on the 30th of January in the Hunter. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed that. There'll be plenty more live streaming banter in the lead up to the Hunter Track Classic. But Saturday, the 30th of January, get out here, and you will not forget one of the most memorable athletics nights of your life. Catch you soon.